Hello, my friends, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, I'm taking you through the fan favorite, the most highly requested, the must-have video of the year, how to get your first pull-up. Now, first, before we dive into drills and exercises that I like to do to support getting your first pull-up, let's talk about the pull-up in general. I think for so many people, they think that the pull-up and getting that itself is an obstacle of upper body strength, when really when we think about the pull-up, we want to be thinking about core and back strength. There's a reason that for many of you, you're more likely to get a chin-up before a pull-up in the gym. This is also a reason why in the List Method programs, if you train with us, we will take you through a six-month chin-up progression as we build your strength and other supporting movements to support pull-up training in the gym and then move you into a pull-up specific training phase after month six. It's not to say that you can't jump into pull-up training right away, but if you're new to the gym or you're lacking some functional upper body strength or some of that core that we need to help translate into the pull-up, it might be worth your time to practice things like chin-ups or a lot of these accessory moves before you try to just start doing pull-ups for the sake of doing pull-ups. Now, with that being said, a lot of what I'm gonna show you today are gonna be core and upper body strengthening exercises that are going to support the pull-up moves as well as variations of the pull-up to help you work towards that. But for many of you, if you're starting to have pull-ups or your goal is to get pull-ups, you're going to want to do something more than one day a week increasing that frequency in order to practice this. You have to be doing this in your training to some degree in order for it to show up and translate to a pull-up. You can't just do pull-up supporting exercises or workouts or drills or variations once in a blue moon or once in a while if you want to get pull-ups. And then once you have pull-ups, you can't just do them whenever you want them to be able to sustain them and keep them. You have to keep training them and to continue to have them in your program for you to practice or train or get stronger than or get stronger in in order for you to be able to do more larger sets, multiple working sets, et cetera, et cetera. So you just can't willy-nilly say, I'm gonna do a pull-up or I'm gonna get better at pull-ups and never actually train them. But let's dive into some of the things that I like to do that will help you get that first pull-up and then potentially get stronger to allow you to support higher pull-up rep ranges or multiple sets as time goes on. So first, when we are thinking about the pull-up, we are thinking about the core engagement that is required for this. A lot of people just wanna hang on the bar and pull themselves up, but it requires a lot of core and full body, lower body control control in order to hold that hollow hold position that you're having in the pull-up, which is why one of the core exercises you will see me and many people recommend to start are going to be hollow rocks and hollow holds, and I'll demo that here. So the hollow hold position is going to be where you're laying flat and you're lifting your shoulder blades up off the ground and then your legs up off the ground. So you're mostly staying in this rocking position. You can see a ton of core engagement right here. And this is largely the position that you will see yourself in that pull-up. You're gonna be holding a hollow rock position, especially if you're trying to translate this to CrossFit. Now, you can try to accumulate holding this for 30 to 60 seconds or working up to that over time. So maybe 10 seconds on, relax, 10 seconds on, accumulating to 30 seconds total. The next progression for this is going to be hollow rocks. Now this is a little bit more difficult and potentially maybe more applicable to some of the CrossFit variations of pull-ups or mu muscle um, ups or any of that stuff, but it's also, I think, a great core exercise for mimicking this for you. This is simply staying in a hollow hold position and rocking back and forth as such. Now, as I mentioned, the pull-up is not only core, but it's a ton of back. And a lot of people think that if they just get their upper body stronger, that the pull-up will come itself. And that does not hurt. You should be training to get your upper body stronger and that will help your pull-up goal. But you really wanna think about that back and your lats. That is kind of what is initiating that pull-up moment. So one of the newer core variations that I actually really like that I'm gonna share with you today is the band hold hollow is the band and hollow hold. That will kind of help you to engage your lats and pull with that while staying in that hollow hold position. This is compliments of Coach Allison and Coach Noah who introduced me to this and I'm obsessed with doing it in my training in general as a core movement, but I think it'd be great here for those of you training your core and trying to engage your lats while doing that simultaneously and translating that to the pull up. to those hollow hold variations, you want to program these into your training as something like three by 30 seconds or three by five by 30 seconds of those hollow hold or working up to that over time. 
or doing your hollow rocks and maybe three sets of 20 to 30 rocks or doing the banded lap pullovers hollow hold hold with 10 to 15 reps of that pullover over time and working up to that. You can do these as part of your warm up or just your general core work as part of your training. So those are three core moves that you could do to help support your training goal. Now the pull up is pulling yourself up onto a bar. So what are ways that you can train these things and translate them then to the bar hanging movements? So there's a few exercises I wanna show you here that you can do to support this type of training. So let's get on the bar. So first we're gonna do dead hangs. These are just going to be getting on the bar and the pull up. Now you could build something up to that by just holding yourself for 20 to 30 seconds. I'm gonna show you why I want you to practice holding your weight here with this next drill. So the next thing I really love when it comes to pull-up training progression is going to be the scapular pull-up. This is going to be specifically training that downward lat pulling motion of your scaps. When we are thinking about initiating a pull-up like so, you're, you're not pulling just with your arms, you're initiating down with your shoulders and then pulling your weight up like this. So the next exercise I wanna show you is gonna be scapular pull-ups. So these are going to be, you're going to get on the bar in that dead hang position we were just in, and you are going to just pull up, shrug, with just your shoulders. I really like using these in warm-ups before pull-up type work in a workout because I think it's a great way to both sneak in some scapular pull-up work, but also warm you up for the pull-up variation work that you're going to be doing that day in your training program. But I like these a lot for strengthening that scapular pull, and that's going to be what, again, is going to initiate that movement for you. So it can help you to train that kind of shoulder into your pockets, bringing your shoulders down, kind of thinking you're kind of pulling them down and back into shoving them in your pockets is kind of a cue that people like to use when you're doing this in training. When you're programming space, in your training in your warm-up or as a pull-up progression type drill you can think about doing maybe three to five sets of 10 reps or five to ten reps depending on where you're at and how many you can do and building up and starting there the next thing that we can do is simply a hollow rock or hollow hold on the bar so this is very similar to what we were doing when we were on the floor but instead of doing it on the floor you're going to be doing it while holding yourself to the bar so we're going to get up get in our deck <laughs> We're going to scout, pull up, and bring our leg out a little bit and stay in this hollow hold position. As you can see, each of these movements progresses just like the floor movements into more difficult, but also in this specific situation, linking together the skill of the one movement into the next and building on that and progressing that strength. Working towards your first pull-up might not look like just doing only pull-ups in that progression. If you could go from holding your body weight to holding your body weight and shrugging, to holding your body weight while holding a shrug and that hollow hold position, that is progression of both training that scap and lat strength that you need, as well as your core, which is going to, again, help you initiate that pulling movement. Now, let's talk about skills that you can do when you are physically on the bar doing the movement. Now, doing the pulling up portion is going to be hard, and that is the concentric component of the pull up. But what might be easier for you to start with is actually training the eccentric. And pull up negatives are something that I really love to utilize in training to allow you to get some time under tempo, or allow you to get some time under tension and train that eccentric, which can help you kind of train going through the various phases of that movement, as well as that slow lowering component to gain strength before you're able to pull up by just practicing the lowering component of the movement. Let me show you that here. So when you're doing this, you might not be able to just reach a pull up bar like I am too short to do, but what you can do is get a bench, a box, or use your assistant machine in the gym to help you get up to that top and then lower yourself down and use it to kind of reset back at the top there. So when you're thinking about doing this, you wanna think about your lowering and your eccentric portion of this being about three to five seconds long and trying to build up between three to five of these over time as you gain strength and skill within this. So again, you can use a box or bench, get up there, allow that to kind of jump, get in your hollow hold, and then slowly lower and pull yourself back in and reset. Now the next thing that you can do are intentional pauses, either at the top or at the midpoint of the movement to allow you to train your strength in the areas that tend to get the hardest when you are doing the pull-up variation. For many of you, again, breaking that pull-up, starting it, initiating it will be difficult, but so will finishing the rep at the top. And that's what you can practice here with these intentional pauses. 
So what this looks like, again, you can use bench or box assistance. You are going to just hold at the top of the movement. So you could just get up there and instead of initiating a negative or a rep, you can just get up. And hold that there at the top. Again, once you are able to do pull-ups or multiple pull-ups, this is something that I like to utilize in training, is doing pull-ups where then you are holding and pausing at the top before going into the next rep. That is more difficult and is highly skilled and you can do it assisted, which we'll go in here in a second. But that is something that I like to do and that will look like this. So simply holding that pause at the top of the movement will help you again train that part of the movement where you're pulling up over the bar, which is where many people get stuck. Another option and variation of training this as well is to do a pause part way. And this is pretty challenging, so let me try to show you and not make a fool out of myself. So again, you wanna get up into that pull up position. You can use the bangster box to help you get up there. And then you're gonna pause right in the midpoint of that. Right at that 90 degree, you can see my elbows are nicely bent and then lower. And again, on these, you don't have to pull up to be able to do these. Use a bend to box your system machine to help you get up there. And then you can repeat. Now, if the bar height is too high and you don't quite have the strength to even use that with your body weight unsupported, we can then take that and mimic the bar by setting up a barbell at a lower height in the squat rack to do this on as such. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna kinda set up a barbell at, there isn't really a set specific height of what this needs to be, but essentially you wanna be able to comfortably fit underneath it with your arms extended and be able to mimic that pull up motion. So I'm very small, so if you are taller, you might be setting that up a little bit higher than me, but you basically want to be able to get down underneath it with your arms fully extended where you're not pressed and scrunched underneath there where it's super low, but you're able to kind of get where your arms are vertical underneath the bar, your feet are flat and you can pull up. So when you're doing this, you don't want this to turn into an inverted row type situation but you wanna be directly underneath the bar like this. And then what you can do is you can practice those pauses at the top, the negatives, or even those midpoint pauses. What this is essentially doing is that by giving you your leg support, it's similar to doing an incline push-up where you're having some of your body weight being reduced and you're able to do that almost in a supported way while it's still being your free body weight and not being banded or assisted while practicing this. So you're still able to practice and train this with your body weight itself, not just using band assistance or a machine to assist you. So try setting this up in your squat rack and practicing these, especially if you're a beginner or this is super new to you or even doing something like hanging hanging from the top of the rack is still very hard for you at this time. While we are here with our bar down, set up on the rack, another thing that I really like as an accessory move or something to help you train towards that first pull-up is going to be inverted barbell rows. So what you're gonna do is again, set the barbell up here, you can set it up higher or lower, or you can set it up and elevate your feet out in front of you to make it easier or harder. Essentially, the more that your body weight is slanted or supported by your legs, it's going to be easier, and the more you are horizontal, the harder it's going to be. So what you're gonna do is I'm gonna get up under the same setup here and I'm gonna show you. You're gonna pull it back so it's nice and locked so you're not moving underneath it. You want your body to kind of be horizontal with that bar, the slight diagonal, and you're gonna pull yourself up into it. So you wanna kind of get to a point where it's at your chest. If you need to make that easier, you can set it up higher or you can stand up higher. This is easier for me than this which will then be harder if I elevate my feet and I'm parallel and I'm having to pull myself completely flat and up. Again, remembering that the pull-up is largely a lower back pulling exercise, so we wanna get our lower back stronger, and that can be a great way to train holding and pulling yourself on a bar while also training that back strength as well. 
I like, do in, I like doing inverted barbell rows as a row variation in my training programs, especially getting you used to moving your own body weight. And you can do something here like three sets of eight to 12 reps per set at an RPE of eight as part of your training, either as a back exercise or as part of your pull-up specific training progression that you're working with in the gym for yourself. Now, the next thing we wanna think about is using assistance to allow us to either train for that first rep or doing higher volume that allows us to accumulate reps and get better at doing bigger, larger sets of pull-ups over time, depending on where we're at in our training. I like using bands, but if you only have an assisted pull-up machine at your gym available to you, that's totally okay. Bands themselves have limits. Everything has a limit versus using your actual body weight. But that's why I wanted to show you first examples of how to use your body weight to train these without being able to do a pull-up first. But in order to do a pull-up, we do still need to practice doing pull-ups. So I like using assistance to do that. So for a band, you're simply gonna wrap it around here in your machine, you'll set that up and adjust below you. Bands machines are similar in that if you want to have more assistance, you use a thicker band or more weight in the machine. And if you need less assistance, you want more body weight, you will use a smaller band or less weight in the machine. And again, always do this set to the reps and sets that you are doing and the prescribed intensity, or I really like using reps in reserve. So saying do it to you have like three reps left in the tank per set um, when programming this for clients, but making sure that it just matches that. It doesn't have to be perfect. A set of three is going to use a different resistance band or weight on the assisted machine as then a set of 10. So it's not that you're gonna use one band all of the time. It's going to vary just like if you were picking dumbbells for a strength move in the gym for accessories. So set this up here. I like to get this in here. And again, for this, you put your foot in it, get into your hollow rock position, initiate your stat pull, and you can practice pull-ups like such. Now, an option here as well, if you are someone who wants to practice from the top and you feel like maybe it's getting too easy using a barbell at the bottom, but you need a little bit more assistance throughout the top here, so you can still use the assistant machine or the band to do the things that we just walked you through from the negatives and or some of the pauses. This can help you practice that pulling up and pausing at the top and your full weight is here at the top. Same thing with the slow lowering. You'll get more support as you go down, but it can kind of help you work through that if you can't quite lower your own body weight on your own yet at this time. So these are all tools you have in the toolbox to use for you based off where you're at in your pull-up training or the goals that you have to help you at least get to that first pull-up. Now, when you've been training for a while and maybe you have the first pull-up or you can do one or two, but you're struggling with stringing them together, this is where I like to utilize the bands for higher volume sets. So with this, you might be using your bands and doing like three sets of 10 or I like doing, and this is a Coach Noah thing that we both like to use in our programs, is like doing 30 reps for total in as few sets as possible or things like that or hitting a specific prescribed intensity in a rep range so you can work between that based off how you feel. So maybe you're going between eight and 15 reps until you hit a reps in reserve of two, but using your band to do those higher volume sets so you can accumulate that volume of doing the pull up and then translating that over time then to lower rep work. So you might be starting out a training block had doing like 10 to 15 reps and working yourself down to that three to five reps or whatever that looks like to get stronger if you're practicing strength or you're reducing weight as you go throughout the block and or progressing with a lighter band or less assistance so that you're relying more on your body weight within those accumulated reps and volume over time. These are ways that you'll progress within this when you're moving past training for your first pull up and into training to doing multiple reps and sets within your training and actually stringing together quality reps of your own body weight as part of your training or exercise routine. Last but not least, when you are training for your first pull up, you you do want to still make sure that you are getting your back stronger. You want to be doing things like lat pull downs, row variations, whether it's with the barbell, dumbbells, cables, and or general upper body strength. I love using tempo or pauses where you're really utilizing that in range of motion of pausing right there with lat based movements to get those lats strong for that and or using variations that are coming from all angles. You don't wanna just do a million lat pull downs and think that that will translate to your pull ups. You do need to be using things that are moving your body weight, but you wanna think about getting your lats and back muscles stronger as well as your core and your whole upper body. 
Again, you're using a lot of back with that pull up variation, but it doesn't hurt to have upper body strength when you are doing these in the gym or anything else that you're doing. Your pull ups are gonna come a lot easier if you focus on improving your training as a whole. While practicing these skills, variations, regressions, and progressing them over time while simply getting stronger in the gym. Let me know below if you are working on your first pull up or if you're working on multiple sets. And if you found this video helpful, please let me know if you try any of this in the gym. I really want you guys to get your first pull up and hopefully that this video will help you reach that goal that you have. If you found this helpful, go ahead and hit that like button, subscribe to my channel so you don't mix any future content and let me know below what tips you're going to use to help you work towards your first pull up. If you found this helpful, I'm really excited for you and I really hope it helps you in your training. If you do get your first pull up or this helps you, come back to this video and let me know. Otherwise, I'll catch you on the next one.